All right, it's good to be with you this evening. Let's sing a song. I pray it'll be a blessing to you. Um, Will it have anything to do with the message? It may, it may not. But I think it will. The Lord lays something on your heart to do. Do it. Really, just do it. And, uh, I'm going to talk about singing tonight. We've been uh, having some folks come and, and practice and it's been pretty good. Brother Shelton and his kids and um, Sam. Um, Heather started coming. I'm looking for others. Just come practice. Practice a song you like. Um, there ain't no one going to laugh at you. Maybe just me, but that's it. <laughs> um, just come and practice and have fun. I can't sing. I'm going to sing this. I'm going to do my best to sing it. This song means a lot to me. Um, and there's a good message in it. <clears throat> As I sing, if you know it, just sing it with me. and uh, Let's just uh, sit back, relax. Have fun tonight with this message. It has a serious aspect to it, but it also just enjoy it. All right, here's the song Precious Memories. Precious memories, unseen angels sent from somewhere to my soul. How they linger ever near me, and the sacred past unfold. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul. In the stillness of the midnight, precious sacred scenes unfold. Precious Father, loving Mother, fly across the lonely years. And old home scenes of my childhood in fond memory appear. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul. In stillness of the midnight, precious sacred scenes unfold. In the stillness of the midnight, echoes from the past I hear. Oh, Time singing, gladness bringing from that lovely land somewhere. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul in the stillness. Of the midnight, precious.
precious sacred scenes unfold as I travel on life's pathway know not what the years may hold as I ponder hope grows fonder Precious memories flood my soul. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul. In the stillness of the midnight, pray. Precious sacred scenes unfold. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, be with us this evening as we open thy word. Open it to our hearts and our minds. Oh, take us back to that place, Lord, where we met you. Where the light just broke through. We heard that voice calling to us that we may trust you and receive you as our own. Oh God, do a mighty work this evening, I pray, in this place. Oh, break the shadows, the chains. All, everything that would hold us back from loving you and cutting loose. Oh God, may this evening bring you glory, and I believe it already has. For all honor and glory is yours forever and ever. Amen. All right, turn in your Bibles to the book of Psalm 137. We'll just get right into it. Psalm 37, 1. And this is about captivity. Think with me. Let's read this slowly and prayerfully, very carefully. Psalm 137, beginning in verse number one. By the rivers of Babylon, look at this, there we sat. There we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Verse 2. We, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. Verse number 3. For there they had carried us away captive, required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Look at verse number four. How? Shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? So they have took him captive. As they were on their way, they were entering that strange land. And their captors were required a song. Sing us one of your songs. These people were heartbroken. They were in a strange land with idols and, and idol worshipers and all that stuff. How can we sing the Lord's song in this strange place? Think with me a minute. 
They required us of us mirth. Who knows what mirth is? He's a show off, isn't he? <laughs> mirth. Definition of mirth is jolliness, excitement, merriness. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Do you get that? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Back to verse, verse 2. We, hang, we, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. A lot of us Christians fall into this category. We don't, we don't want to, we don't, I don't know what it is. We don't want to sing. We don't want to sing out. Turn with me to the book of Jeremiah chapter 7. I'm just going to go through some verses. Jeremiah chapter 7. And um, I think it's verse... 29. Jeremiah 7 and verse number 29. It reads like this. We'll be reading down to verse 31. Cut off thine hair, O Jerusalem, and cast it away, and take up a lamentation on high places, for the Lord hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. Look at verse number 30. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to pollute it. Look at verse 31. And they have built the high places of, of Tophet, which is the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the, in the fire which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. Look at verse Go down here to verse uh, Jeremiah seven twenty three. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. And look at verse twenty four. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the consuls, and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Now look at verse number 34. Of uh, Jeremiah 7. Then will I cause to seize from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. Mirth is, is social merriment, an actual excitement. Verse 34, uh, again, then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth. And the voice of gladness. In other words, sin. Now think of the think 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 with me a little bit here. Worshiping God, praising God. Is not praising him a sin? Think of me, I got two preachers here. Is not praising him a sin? It is. Is not giving him honor, giving him the honor that's due him, is that a sin? Glorifying him? All this. You know, if that's a sin.
Won't sin take you farther than you want to go? And keep you there longer than you want to stay? Think with me a little bit. Is he your God or not? And he is. He's worthy of your excitement and of your praise and of your social merriment. He's worthy of it. The joy of the Lord is your actual strength. When you're feeling down all the time and, and you have no joy and you have, you're, you're weak and, and you're susceptible to attack. Why? Because your, your head's hung low. You ain't looking forward. Your spiritual eyes are totally closed. Your heart is callous. You have walked away from God and you're in, your, you're, you're in captivity in your own mind. These guys were in captivity and they say they hung their harps on the, on the willow trees and they said, how can we sing and how should we show merriment in this strange land. You're in a strange place in your own mind. Are you with me? Are you getting it? That's what's happening. Let's keep going. Uh, Jeremiah 25. We'll just go for a few verses. And uh, Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 8 and 9. You see, if there isn't any joy, something is wrong. And because of sin, they hang their hearts and their heads. That's what I just told you. When we got started just now, there was a lot of joy and a lot of excitement. I liked it. A lot of laughter. And that's the way it should be. Your home, your church should be the happiest places that you have. Your children, your home, and their church should be the happiest places they should walk into. If there isn't any joy, something is wrong. Jeremiah chapter 25, beginning in verse 8. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, because ye have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about, and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment. And and hissing, and perpetual desolations. Moreover, moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth, and the voice of gladness. The void. Look here, we go again. The voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride. The sound of the millstones, and the light of what? The candle. Your light. God warns three different times he will remove the joy because there is something wrong. Now ask yourself, what's wrong? What's happening in here?
Think with me a minute. Let's go to 1 Corinthians right quick. find it. It is. Um, Second Corinthians, Chapter Two. We'll begin here in verse number seven. So that, contrawise, he ought to rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sour, sour, sorrow. Verse number eight says, Wherefore I beseech you that you would confirm your love toward him. Toward who? Verse number nine says, For to this end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient, look at this, in all things. Verse number 10 says, To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes I forgave I it in the person of who? Christ. Verse number 11, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. He wants to deceive you. He doesn't want you to praise God. He doesn't want you to, to show merriment towards him. God pulled that away. The rejoicing has ended. When you get to the point in your life where you can't or won't sing praises to God, there's something missing. There's something missing. There ought to be a noise. There ought to be an excitement, especially in the song service. It's okay to rejoice with God. It's okay. It's okay to rejoice with God. It's okay. There has to be life in Christianity. There has to be a vigor in Christianity. You know, are you happy to be in church? I'm thrilled every time the doors are open. I'm happy to be in church. I re truly, truly, I'm not just because I'm the preacher, but even when, when I was there, there was an excitement. I would anticipate the song service because I know who was leading the song. I used to say, let's see what this guy, let's see, let's see what, 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 the, what the song leader brings up. Let's see what the Lord laid on his heart. You know what I'm saying? I anticipated it. And then when the preacher got up, I anticipated what he was going to say. I would think, where is he at? I'd look where the Bible was. I can see the Bible. I can see uh, where it was fatter on one side and, and thin on the other. And I'd try to get where he was at before he would even mention 
the verse and chapter of scripture he was going to, going to lead. I would anticipate it. I would say, I wonder if someone's going to get saved today. I wonder if people are going to rededicate their lives. I wonder. All these questions were in, were in my head. Because there was an, there's an excitement there. What's God going to do? Is God going to show up? Are you with me? What's going to happen today in church? What's going to happen? You don't believe me? Ask her. She knows. There ought to be an excitement. There has to be life. The, 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 the children, the youth, the young ones, they have, they're, they're, there should be an excitement in their eyes when they watch you, the adults. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shock you. I ain't going to say who it was or nothing like that. A young kid. I was standing by the back door there and they were leaving. The young kid asked their, their, I don't know if it was their mom or their dad, said this, do you really love coming here? That's what they said. Do you really love coming here? He's looking up at him. He's confused. Think with me. How you carry yourself in the house of God. Your character. Kids sense it. They look and they're looking at it. They can feel the vibe, so to speak. Right. Are you with me? Yeah. Ah. Go and meet a book of Job. It's not even 7 o'clock yet, so bear with me. The book of Job. Hmm, let's see where we go with the Job. Book of Job. Thirty-three. Book of Job, chapter thirty-three, and verse. We'll start here in verse one. Book of Job, chapter 33, verse 1 says this, Wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches and hearken to all my words. Behold, now I have opened my mouth. My tongue hath spoken in my mouth. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of of the Almighty hath given me life. If thou canst answer me, set thy words in order before me. Stand up. Verse number six. Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's stead. I also am formed out of the clay. Behold, my terror shall not make thee afraid, neither shall my hand be heavy upon thee. Surely thou hast spoken in the mind 
in mine hearing, and I have heard the voice of thy word, saying, I am clean without transgression. I am innocent, neither is there iniquity in me. Look at verse 10. Behold, he findeth, behold, he findeth occasions against me. He counteth me for his enemy. God will bring it back. It will come back. The joy, the voice, and the goodness. God will bring it back. Ask God for your song back. That genuine joy. I remember, I'll give you this and then I'll close. There's a time when God took my joy. It was, it was a few years back. My son was still small, very little. And I was at I was at the end of it. I didn't have no joy, I didn't have no desire to serve anymore. It wasn't God's fault, but my joy was gone. We got hurt, got hurt in church, got lied about, falsely accused of different things, and I was done. I told Luke, I'm going to go walk around for a little bit and see what we're going to do. Now, if you would have asked me what I was doing as I was walking around, I'd say I was gonna. I would say I was praying, but I wasn't praying. I was complaining to God, Brother Brother Shorty. I was complaining. And my son, he comes running up and grabs my hand. I did ask God, though, what was my next step? What do I do now? Lord, you know what happened. I've been hurt. My wife's been hurt. My girl's been hurt. We've all been been hurt and lied about. What do I do? I asked him this, do these people really hate me that much to do that? Again, I said, my son reached and grabbed my hand. He knew his dad was hurting. Knew his mom was hurting. He goes, Dad, I learned a song on VBS. I said, okay, that's fine. I said, I'm thinking, son, I'm thinking. I stayed walking. He, he started singing the song he learned.
Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything that God cannot do? And he goes, is there anything, is there anything that my God cannot do? I looked at my boy. He saw the tears coming down. He goes, Dad, are you okay? I said, son, I am now. And I thanked him. God used my little boy to give me the answer that I was searching for. What's my next step? I thought I was done. Thought I was done. We need to ask God to give us the spirit of mirth, the spirit of joy. God needs to give us that mirth. Music ministers, I wish Brother Clay was here, Brother Ken's here. Be dried up when you're singing. Always be prepared. Have songs. Have have have. Be praying about what songs to bring for next Sunday. Even even now, when when I was leading the singing, uh, 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 Monday morning, Tuesday morning, I was praying about these different songs. I was looking through the songbook and I'd see what what what. what what would God want me to sing and, and, and bring to the congregation that day? Because what you do, you, you, you set the tone of the church. You set the momentum of the church, of the whole service. It's what you do. You set the tone of the preacher. He's listening to these songs. The music ministers, these, these, you guys are the, the backbone. You set things in motion. God, let God use you to set things in motion. The right speed, the right momentum, the right spirit. Let him use you. You know, on Sundays we should go home tired because we, we poured our all into the service, everyone. Bird Jamie used to say, Hey man, if you're preaching and you can still talk on Monday morning, guess what? You didn't preach. That's what Bird Jamie would say. We need to ask God for that spirit. We ought to be so excited about who God is. Who we serve. Who loves us and considers us and uses us. Aren't you excited about that? I know I'm going to heaven. I know it. But what about now? I'm living now. I'm here. I'm dealing with so many different things. What about now? 
Shouldn't I have joy? Shouldn't I have excitement about what God's doing? Waiting to see the, 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 seeing him, seeing him who is invisible. Yeah. Amen. Do you know it takes more muscles in your face to frown than it does to smile? <laughs> Think about it. Watch. Go ahead. You're going to use all this and you're like, yeah. Look like you ate a lemon. But watch, relax your face. Do you know you have a natural smile? Watch, relax your face. It naturally widens. God made us that way. So we can smile. You know? Now we got to wear all these dumb masks and stuff. Don't see no one smiling no more. Are you smiling, Miss Nana? <laughs> what about you, Miss Smyrna? Are you smiling? Miss Evelyn, are you smiling? I know she's smiling. <laughs> Miss Shorty, back there by. Yep, she's smiling. I can see it. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Think with me, man. One of these days you're going to get to heaven. One of these days you're going to hear the elders and the beasts praising God, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. You're going to hear it, man. And it ain't going to be like the way we were singing a while ago. No, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be echoing across to heaven. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We're going to see it. If you're saved tonight, you're going to hear it and you're going to see it. If you're not saved tonight, you're not going to see or hear nothing but the screams and the stench of an eternal hell. If you're not 100% sure tonight that you're saved and if you were to drop dead right now, you'd wake up in the arms of Jesus, you better get it settled tonight. Because what I'm talking about is real. Once you give up the ghost, there's no, there's no chances after that. You're gone. It's done. Be sure. Be sure. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you the very best way I know how. Lord, I thank you for loving us. For loving me, who am so undeserving. I don't deserve heaven, Lord. And, and I know, I know that, and I know you know that, but Lord, you have a love for us that's unfathomable to the human mind. I can't, I can't clasp it, but I believe it. Lord, you love us with, with a holy love, with a pure, holy love. Father, little by little, I'm, I'm, I'm knowing that love. And I praise your holy name for it. Father, those that are here sitting in this auditorium, 
Bless their homes, I pray. Their marriages, their families, their children, grandchildren. Father, touch their lives in some way. Father, give us back our joy. I know we live in uncertain times in this world, but we can have joy because we have Jesus. Thank you so much for that. Bless this invitation, I pray. Lord, as only you can. You can move these people, I can. If you can break their hearts, I can. If you can break their wills, I can. But you can. For there's nothing that my Lord cannot do. Bless this time of invitation again, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand with me.